let's wrap up everything I read in April. So last month when I filmed my March wrap up, I filmed it like a little bit before the end of the month. So I do have some books to roll over to this April wrap up that I read at the end of March. One of the books I read at the end of March was The War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armantrout. I will have a JLA specific reading vlog coming next week I believe where I read the three books that I needed to catch up on but I will wrap up my thoughts here since I read this one in the month of March and this is the fourth book in the From Blood and Ash series. We follow Poppy. She's the maiden so her face is to be covered in public. She can't be seen from. She can't be heard and all of a sudden she gets this new guard that makes her kind of question everything that she's been taught to believe and in this fourth book we are just like so far beyond where we were in the first book and I unfortunately gave this one like three stars which is really rare for me because I tend to rate books really highly even though if they're not like perfect but my problem with this book was just the pacing. I still love these characters deeply. We got some like things that we had been waiting for for a long time in this book and I thought the ending was explosive but I just felt like the pacing dragged a lot and I feel like if this series was a little bit more condensed maybe the, the story would be a little bit more streamlined. I don't know. I just feel like it's a little bit dragged out at this point which is so upsetting for me to say because I really do love this series and this world but I do think that the first two books are the strongest in the series. I will of course continue to read because I love these characters but I was a little bit disappointed and I'm sad. And then the last book I read in March is I listened to the audiobook for Frostbite by Rochelle Mead. This is the second book in the Vampire Academy series where we follow Rose Hathaway. She's a Dampir, so she's a half mortal vampire, half human, and they are tasked with protecting the Maroi, which are like mortal vampires that only use their magic for good. And then they have to fight against the Strigoi, which are like the immortal bad vampires. So this second book takes place at a ski lodge after the events of the first book. They like bring all the students to like a safe ski lodge for winter break and there's just like a lot of like fun high school drama along with of course like love interests and vampires and all that fun stuff. I'm having a really really fun time with this series and I ended up giving this one four stars. I really like listening to them on audiobook too. I think it just gives me such nostalgic YA feelings and I truly have been enjoying my time reading this. Also Rose and Dimitri forever. In this book we're also introduced to Adrian and he's such a fun side character that is mischievous and likes to stir the pot. And I enjoyed the ski lodge setting. I think it was kind of fun to have a book that didn't take place at the academy. I had a great time. Okay, now moving on to what I actually read in April. And so I was on vacation in the beginning of April, so I only brought my Kindle with me because I really tried to pack light. So I hope you guys are proud of me. And I binged an alien romance series just because I was like, I don't know what to pick up. And something about this book just called to me. <laughs> so the series is the Clicanian series, Slithlanian series, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's an alien romance series, so if you like Ice Planet Barbarians, you'll probably like this. The first book is Choosing Theo by Victoria Aveline. The concept of this is Jade is abducted from Earth, and then she kind of like crash lands on this planet, and she ends up in a society, the Clicanian society, where they are outnumbered males to females 20 to 1 and so the women are like very revered in this society and they're treasured and they go through marriages where they have like three month trial periods with like different men and if they like think that these guys are worthy then they would potentially like have a child with them. So the men in order to prove their worthiness have to go to husbandry school where they learn to be like a good husband and so like the women are pampered and taken care of and so Jade they're like, okay, like, you guys seem compatible with our species because apparently humans were also descended from the same ancestors. So they have her, like, go through the marriage ceremony and she ends up with Theo, who is this, like, former mercenary and he looks like he has black tattoos all over him, which is actually, like, scars for their people. So people think that he's really ugly, even though to, like, Earth people he's really hot. So Jade ends up choosing him even though he's like, has never been chosen and he doesn't really know, like, what to make of her. So 
they end up like she lives in his house and he like is trying to be a good husband but he also is like really grumpy and I loved the story. I ended up giving this one five stars. We were really introduced to like this world and I think the concept of husband school is so fun and this world is really fun. It's like Ice Planet Barbarians but it's definitely more technology wise and this is like a faded mates romance trope as well and we learn more about that and the spice was spicy and I, like I inhaled I inhaled this book on a flight like I could not put it down I where did the flight go I don't know I spent the whole time reading this book because I was so invested in it it was amazing and I'm obsessed and I've read this entire series now and I have a new font like I had a fondness for alien romance because I like Ice Planet Barbarians but now I'm getting into different parts of the genre and I still have a fondness for it. So then the next book in the series is Freeing Luca. So in this one Luca is basically like captured and tortured by these people that are trying to like solve the population crisis basically but they're doing it in very like barbarian means so you find out that these are the people that have been like ordering the human woman to their planet and then we have alice who is held captive in this place and he basically like imprints on her when she like walks by his room where he's being tortured so she has to kind of like console him through being tortured but when they get free like he doesn't really like remember his time in there and like whereas like she was like comforting him a lot and so they kind of have to like reconnect after and this one was so cute i probably would give this one 4.5 stars luca was just like a little cinnamon roll he loved like animals and was into like research and stuff like that and they had such like a cute bond and then the third one was saving Verraco and this one is so like in different cities there are different like species of or like not species but i guess different like races of clicanians and they each have different characteristics so Verraco is basically like an alien vampire because he's blue or like teal and he like has this bite that like is venomous and so like he could be like really dangerous so basically like when the human woman escape this facility some of them are like i'm not going with these alien guys so like we are just going to go into the wilderness and so one of them is lily and rocco ends up finding lily in the wilderness and then they have to go to like find a civilization and they bond in the wilderness and i really liked lily she was like a survivalist on earth like her parents would just bring her on like off the great camping trips which is how she could like how she decided to kind of break off on, on her own because otherwise like realistically you would not survive in the wilderness. I also like Verraco and I mean like the spice in the series is so it's so good but my problem with Verraco is I feel like he like there was like a miscommunication where like he was purposely omitting things to the point where like I like I don't know like I, there was an excuse for it but I don't know if it like a hundred percent accounted for his behavior so Mm, I gave this one three stars just because of that but I get I, like if you like the series you get to learn more about the world and different cities and different traditions so it is still really fun and worth reading. And the fourth one because like I said I binge the series is Tempting Ozed and this one is about Ozed so Alessandra or Alex was in the wilderness with Lily and then they got separated so Ozed finds Lily and brings her to this city where it's like they live in the treetops and like tree houses and basically because like they would have forced her into a marriage in the city like Ozed and uh, Alex like have to be in a fake marriage to like you know appease the rulers of the city that is less strict than the the city that like Jade originally went to where they kind of gave her more of a choice and the human women that are coming and living there and adjusting like are given the choice of whether or not they want to participate in the marriage ceremony whereas Alex would have been forced to in the city so yeah it was spicy it was good I loved the the like treetop city setting I thought it was really fun and I get like the spice was just so good like that the faded mate trope just hits in the right spot every time <laughs> then I read using Feho, which is the fourth one in, or fifth one in the series. And this one is about Feho, and we've like seen him. He like kind of dresses like very piratey, so he's pretty much like a space pirate, and he is like all gaudy. And like in the marriage ceremony, you get to like test the husband before you choose him. So like all these women like always like test him and never choose him because he's like got this like swagger but like he is actually like a merchant that goes off world a lot of times so they don't actually like want to choose him to be the husband but Veronica she's like very surly and moody she decides to 
choose Feho to marry so that she can get like on his merchant ship and get back to Earth because she really really wants to get back to Earth. So she is using him and he's like it's so sad because he's just like so excited that someone finally chose him and it was like a human woman and he he was so happy to like have her on his ship and she was just using him so this one like they definitely have like some contention between them because like he's confused because she's like very like not into his advances even though he like thinks that she would be because like she chose to marry him so it's like it's a very um it's like marriage of convenience kind of thing and like the the spaceship setting it's like he's like a space pirate so we get to go to other planets so again it expands the world building which is really fun i don't think i mentioned but i gave tempting ozed 4.5 and then i gave using feho 4.5 as well then we have releasing a maladek which is a novella and this one the main character's name is katie so i was like wow sounds familiar fun so maladek is from using feho and they're like on this other planet basically our captive and then we have katie who was brought to like a different planet from like a obviously like a legal space trade and she's been like working in this palace for this other planet so she doesn't even have anything to do with like the original clicanian planet that maladek is from and they meet on this like barren prison planet where these creatures just like lure in spaceships and like use them for like labor and whatnot so not a very good situation and so like they end up crossing paths in the prison and he like immediately like imprints on her and they like have to figure out how to try and to escape and it was a novella but it still had like a very good character arc and plot line and spice and I had fun reading a book with my name in it. Then the last book that's out in the series so far because you know when the next book comes out I will be reading it is resisting Maxu and this one is about Meg and Meg kind of like has a lot of trauma from Earth and she was really excited to be on this new planet that's like very open and accepting because she had a lot to run away from on Earth so she's really like head diving into the culture like learning how to speak the language or like reading the language because they all have like um ear transplants that can like translate any language so she is like all about like living on this new planet because she really has like tried to escape from her traumatic past but she does not want to participate in the marriage ceremony or have anyone imprint on her and so they go on the human woman go on this like tour of all the different cities so all the different cities can like see the humans and Maxu like sees her in the crowd before she leaves and like imprints on her and he's like obviously immediately obsessed with her and when he like finally tracks her down she's like dude what the hell like I don't want a mate I don't want a man I don't want to deal with it and so he has to like convince her to like be his mate and that one I gave four stars and it was fun and again it was fun because we get to see different cities and stuff like that so it's more world building and there's definitely some characters like stories that have been hinted at in the background and I cannot wait for whatever comes next from this author next I read Icebreaker by Hannah Grace this book has been everywhere all over social media and I picked it for my book club I have with my college friends because I was like you guys gotta read spicy romance so this is about Anastasia Allen and she uh, is a Paris figure skater and she's been working really hard at a shot to go to the Olympics and she's at um, Maple Hill University. Currently Nate Hawkins is the captain of the hockey team there and basically something goes wrong with one of the rinks and they have to combine rinks and like their schedules get all messed up and so they're kind of like you know more intertwined with each other and Anastasia hates hockey players um, but she has a hard time resisting Nate. So I ended up giving this one three stars because I was disappointed by a few act, um, parts of it. It was very spicy, like, there wasn't anything, like, super, like, it was very vanilla spice, but there was just, like, a lot of it, which is fun if you're looking for a good spicy romance. But there, there were a few aspects that did bother me, so one of the things that is a trigger for this book is an eating disorder, so I'm gonna go into, like, a little bit of spoilery territory here because I feel like I need to fully say my thoughts on this but her figure skating partner what was his name Aaron I think his name was Aaron like was very controlling of what she would eat and be like oh my god you're too heavy to like lift up because obviously in Paris skating they have to do this so it was kind of implied that like he gave her an eating disorder and then all of a sudden she was living with Nate or like staying with him and he was like oh like you're not eating enough according to your meal plan like let's like make more food for you and all of a sudden she kind of was just like 
cured so it kind of seemed like her eating disorder habits were like put upon her by another person and then another person came in and just like fixed it which is like really not how eating disorders work and I thought it was really weird because Anastasia was like in therapy for a long time and like it like this book has her like going to a therapist for things and she like didn't talk about like the controlling skating partner and like the resulting eating disorder was not really addressed with the therapist so I feel like they they did call it like an eating disorder they're like you are like kind of having an eating disorder but like it wasn't quite like it like I felt like the representation was just very off to me and so it really kind of hurt my enjoyment of this book um, another thing is that Anastasia is adopted and she made like a point to say like there's a line like I want to adopt children and then in the epilogue she's pregnant which is fine but there's no like line of like oh like let's adopt our next one blah 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 I just don't know why you would put in a line that like I want to adopt a child it's really important to me and then in the epilogue she's just like pregnant and that like line is forgotten I feel like you could like bring it back to the epilogue even if she did get pregnant being like oh like we're gonna adopt our next one or blah 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 or like something it just was like really off to me and so those aspects brought down my enjoyment a lot because it I just felt like it wasn't really well executed next I read the third book in the Vampire Academy series Shadow Kiss on audio and it was my favorite one in the series so far I feel like we really upped the ante of like the tension and everything that is happening between like the Strigoi attacks and what's happening at the academy and like the teenage drama and the forbidden romance between Rose and Dimitri like it was so good it was prime YA vampire content and I have been loving the heck out of the series the ending also like my god had me gagged like I really really want to read the next book and my hold for the audiobook has not come through yet and I'm desperately awaiting because it is on my May TBR which you can go watch but I need to read the next book now because I need to know what happens to these characters because oh my god things just got insane and there's three more books left so I, they're about to get a whole lot more insaner. Okay so then next I tried out another alien romance and this time I read Captive of the Horrid King by Zoe Draven and this is in a world that's very much inspired by the Dothraki from Game of Thrones. So there's this human settlement on this planet. I guess the humans have colonies on all these different planets and they are there with the horde people. I forget their name. Um, but they are like nomads and they are very like protective of the land and like the language and the names and stuff like have um, very similar sounding to like Dothraki like with that double K sound and so like you can tell it's like very heavily inspired I mean just like look at the cover so I like pictured Khal Drogo in my head so we have Luna and she lives in this village and they have to be like very careful to like not upset the ways of the hordes and one day her brother like burns the crops or burns the land because he read that that's like a good way to help actually like renew the land but um doing that is like an insult to the, the hordes because they don't like believe in like injuring the land in any way so Luna offers herself in place of her brother and the horde king instantly is like you're gonna be my wife and so she has to figure out like how to navigate life in this horde and it's like a very different way of life from the humans and of course she like falls in love with the horde king eventually so it was really fun I gave it three stars if you're looking for Dothraki called Drogo vibes. This is definitely the book to go for. Um, it wasn't like my favorite alien romance ever because it just it didn't feel very like alieny. It just kind of felt like different species, but not much like focus on like the intergalactic alien stuff, you know. However, the next book that I read by Zoe Draven was Chef's Kiss, fantastic. Uh, I was obsessed and it's a desire in his blood and this is about Gemma and she basically like her father is kind of like a gambler and so she has to run the mine that her family got their fortune from and they're kind of like on this remote planet and she has these sisters that she is trying to like provide for and not let them know like how actually like broke they are so she's like the you know responsible eldest sister person 
And then one day this guy's like, hey, like I have this Kylor who will pay off all of your family's debts like if you go become his wife. And she's like, that's weird. And Kylor are known for being like super aggressive and mean. And she's like, what the heck is this guy gonna do to me? And then we have Azor who is the Kylor like High Lord type thing. And so like then they go to his planet and he's, I mean, look at the cover. He's like gray skinned. He's got wings and he eats blood so he's like a vampire gargoyle alien yes so there is some blood play in this as well like with like biting and stuff like that so if you're a fan and you're also a fan of alien romance like mix it all together and there you go so basically azor like he has reason to not like Gemma, and so it's kind of an, an enemy to lovers because they're like he she needs him to pay off the family's debts but like he doesn't like her he's just kind of like using her as a bargaining chip to upset his her family but they have to like come to like reluctantly like each other the spice in this was some of my favorite it was really good it was really really good obsessed the next one is coming out in june and i will be picking it up asap because i was obsessed with this i loved the concept like the world building was so cool and like Spice guys, it was so good. It was so good. Okay, next, and then I pivoted and I picked up something completely different. And uh, this is on audio. I my hold finally came through. It had been like on hold for months, and I read A Good Girl's Got to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is a book I've seen everywhere, and I'm like, okay, like I'm gonna give it a try. And I ended up finishing the series. The last book I read in May, though, so it won't be on this video. But it's like my favorite YA mystery thriller of all time. I just feel like it's so brilliantly well done with so many twists and turns that I did not expect and like just kept me on the edge of my seat. So in Good Girl's Guide to Murder we follow Pip and she has to do her senior capstone project and so she wants to be like an investigative reporter and so she decides she's going to investigate the murder of Andy Bell and the subsequent um, suicide of Sal Singh in her town. It's like the case her town is famous for because she feels like some of the details of the case don't add up. So she begins to like interview people and try to like dig into the details of the case. And she also ends up working with Sal's brother, Robbie. And this book was so well done. She's like interviewing all of these people that are like connected to it and finding these like threads and... Um, people aren't always as they seem and also the audiobook was so so good because it's multimedia and I love 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 multimedia like type audiobooks they're just amazing so uh, I just loved everything about this like chef's kiss amazing the suspense and like figuring out what was going on like I did not see coming like what a plot twist and yet it makes sense like I just feel like it's mystery so so well done I loved Pip's character and how she was like such like so determined to solve the case even when things like were difficult and scary and like she is just absolutely amazing and it was one of the best mystery thrillers ever five stars then I read an arc of King of Pride by Anna Huang so this is her I forget what the name of the series is called but it's like her new billionaire series based off of the seven deadly sins so in king of pride we follow kai young and he's the heir to a media conglomerate and then we have isabella who works in the Valhalla club that he goes to and they start this romance and she's like not good enough for him basically because she's just like a bartender and he's this media heir and so and like they can't really be dating because she would lose her job at the Valhalla club which she really doesn't want to do because it, it's um a really great way to support herself in new york city as she's making it on her own and i would say this is definitely the most wholesome couple of hannah huang's but it was so sweet i like that we finally get like a like more like button up or button up professional soft-spoken kind of love interest but he is still spicy you know and I thought that their relationship was really good he kind of helps her like supports her with like the structure she needs and she kind of like helps him loosen up a little bit and so I really enjoyed their romance it was super fun and I'm giving this book four stars and then the last book for April is Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson and this is the second book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series which again chef's kiss wonderful so in this book you know all of the events have happened in a Good Girl's Guide to Murder and 
Pip like releases a podcast about the events and so she is getting quite a bit of social media buzz and then one of her friend's older brother goes missing and the family asks her to like use her podcast and her skills to like help solve the case and it definitely goes deeper than anyone thought and again like this was wild crazy what an incredible reading experience we also get more multimedia type stuff with the audiobook which i really enjoyed all the sound effects and things like that and yeah this series just holds a special place in my heart because i just think it's absolutely so amazing five stars I feel like I've been talking forever, but those are all the books that I read in April. I had a really good reading month. I read 14 books, although I do want to say that the amount of books that you read doesn't determine your worth as a reader. Sometimes it's okay to slow down with your reading and just enjoy the books that you have, and sometimes you will be spending different times reading books just depending on the kinds of books that they are, which are messages that I'm trying to internalize because it's not always a race. But yeah, that is it, and also if you want to look at my like little April reading a spread that I have here. I'm very proud of it. I was reading off of this notebook so I could remember what I rated everything. I had fun. Comment a little blossom emoji if you have watched this far and had some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.